This is Dennis Seatsma, Homestead, Florida, USA, Dennis John Seatsma Productions. Uh, in this video segment, we're going to talk a little more about the 1994 Chevy Astro van that I'm the first owner of, only owner of, since it was new. Um, troubleshooting the electrical problems, so, uh, particularly no start caused by electrical problems. Now, in the prior video segment, I made a few wrong assumptions, people. And hopefully, when I get better at editing, I'll add bloopers or whatever, and uh, I will edit into a video production the segments. But for now, please accept the segments as what they are, a documentary, not a how-to, because I show you my mistakes. So. I made a few mistakes in the prior segment. I made a few false assumptions. And uh, I've cleaned up the work area a little bit. Uh, I call cleaning and organizing uh, moving things around. <laughs> cleaning, but because I was looking desperately for something I needed for the GT5000 tractor project to go forward with the flywheel shearing off. But we'll talk about that in a different segment. Uh, right now I'm going to stay focused on the Astro van. Now I have reviewed the Astro van theory and I'll take some photographs today and I'll put those at the end of the video production and if anybody needs the uh, references in the in the interim direct message me post a comment and I'll try to accommodate you uh, whatever page you need uh, and that helps me improve my research because I need to figure out what pages are essential. Anyway, it's 9.33 in the a.m. on the eastern seaboard of America, USA. Uh, it's October 22nd, October 22nd, 2023. It's a Sunday. It's 77 degrees in the workshop. It's 9.33 a.m. in America. Uh, God bless America. I think it's the greatest nation in the world and a leader for peace in the world when we're not starting new wars to protect our interests. But more often we get in wars trying to protect the interests of our friends around the globe and our partners. And uh, our energy policies sometimes suck. We have enough energy in this country that if we would just use it and set aside the environmental concerns or through engineering get use better use of clean coal and electric nuclear all these forms of energy God blessed us with including solar but there's not a single solution to a complex problem and as a electrical engineer uh, semi-retired I understand the engineering that a lot of politicians would do well to take Take some college classes in physics and science and before you try to lead the nation with your your blah 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 you need to know what the hell you're talking about because you stick your foot in your mouth. Engineering is a, a science of poco y poco as they say in Spanish and I speak Spanish. I'm trying to learn more. I have many Spanish Latin friends around the world and they call it poco y poco, a little by little. Little by little, which is how I learn Spanish. I've been trying my whole life. All my homeboys, all my good friends in Chicago on the south side, uh, most of them were Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, or from, I should say, from Mexico, <laughs> or Puerto Rico. And we had a few Cubans back then, but not many back in the 60s. And I wanted so badly to know what the hell they were talking about, and I just I don't know. I guess I'm slow when it comes to language. Unless we're talking engineering. I love engineering. So, you know, I'm good at studying the things I'm interested in. Uh, but I've always wanted to learn Spanish and be fluent at it. Uh, I could speak it, but I'm not fluent. And I don't have enough words yet under my belt. Anyway, back to the Astro Van. And it's really handy to know more in one language, especially in the world today. And I've traveled around the world for pleasure or business. Most of it pleasure. My wife likes to travel and so do I. 
it was really embarrassing when I got to Italy. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't speak any Italian. And the guy said in perfect tongue, he said, it's okay, sir. We are accustomed to speaking English here in Venice. <laughs> they couldn't have been nicer. And Split Croatia, we went to, was great, the Greek islands. Um, and Greek is like the bedrock of civ civilization, Greek history and language and art and science. And But engineering comes a lot of time, so people that think we could snap our fingers and go electric overnight, we're going to get there as new technology and batteries come out. But, you know, consider Volta had no use for electricity when he... When Ancistio Volta, I know I'm not pronouncing it right, he's an Italian engineer, he invented the first battery back, I think, in the 1600s. We had no use for it, no lights, no motors, nothing. So, sometimes things are invented and it takes hundreds of years for a use. Anyway, back to the Estrovan and off the rant of the... Anyway, we have a service manual or go online, pay for a small fee to alldata.com, do it yourself, or... Mitchell one do it yourself and this is not a how-to it's a documentary anyway I made a few false assumptions that I got to clarify before the Sun gets higher and I lose the light and I may have lost it already oh dang Sun's up in the past video segments I told you how I fabricated this this uh, test cable that goes to the connector and this is a run connector or a prime. It's really a prime connector for the fuel injection. You're supposed to connect that to power, fused of course, and see if your fuel pump is running and if you have fuel pressure. That bypasses everything. But conversely, when the relay is working and everything is working, you'll, you can see power come at, at this connector with the test light going to ground. And the computer turns on the uh, everything long enough to give us fuel pressure that is at least 55 psi and I'm sorry but I don't have time to do to hook up the fuel pressure and show you but if you look at the light when you come on watch what happens with the test light at the prime electrical connector or the prime bung if there's another name for it, let me know. Post a comment, please, or direct message me. Tell me I said it wrong, but I don't have ability to edit, so you get what you get. When we turn the key on, watch what happens. We get the light for two or three seconds, and it goes away. That's long enough to prime it. And with the engine, it, the reason it goes out is there's no oil pressure. There's no, And apparently, the relay gets a ground through the oil pressure sensor, and... I have an oil pressure sensor here in my hand that has I think three terminals on it. Anyway, when she cranks, watch what goes with the light. With it running the lights on. Okay. And if it doesn't do that, she won't start and run. And going back to the oil pressure sensor for a moment, that's what it looks like. It's got a hydraulic end and electrical end. And the electrical end has three terminals. And uh, I assume one of those is a ground. And uh, one of those is, one of the three wires is for the analog. And analog, normally 30 ohms is full scale, which is the lowest reading. And I think the highest, I'd have to check my notes, but I think it's 140 ohms, uh, full scale, and or vice versa. Anyway, 30 to 140 ohms um, for the analog. Most of the gauges are all the same way, the same ohm reading for all of the analog gauges, the fuel, the, the coolant, the oil pressure. So, but isn't this kind of neat to see what, how it works? You turn on the key and you get the light. It goes away and it starts. Now the reason it wasn't starting was like I said, that 30 amp circuit breaker with a broken black brass pin. So 
I have to ferret out a way to bypass that and put the fuse in there some other way until I can have time to uh, ferret all this out. Um, and uh, the other way is if you don't have fuel pressure, your pump could be bad. So if your pump's bad, instead of hooking this for a test light to ground, you would connect this to power and then very carefully put your ear as close don't put your head under the van but put it as close as you can you hear that noise the fuel pumps running now you'd have to put a fuel pressure sensor on there to see if uh, if the pressure is at 50 at least 55 psi on this uh, spider this they call it a CPI uh, 1992 to 95 had a central multi-port fuel injection CMFI or CPI central port injection that they call the spider now they changed that in 1996 to a different kind of spider that they also call a spider but that's a sequential firing in other words the 92 to 95 all six poppets would fire at the same time all six with pulses from the computer usually grounds to the maxi injector and it was like three pulses per rpm so that said um, I can disconnect this now run the battery down and unhook this because we're done testing I pretty well proved to myself that I have to fix but the the thing I said wrong was you won't get any power on the load side of this relay unless you have oil pressure and I can simulate the correct oil pe pressure uh, with a resistance of between 30 and uh, between 30 and 140 ohms for the reading on the gauge but to make that relay work it takes a ground to give you to t you know it has a tipping point where it gives you a ground if your oil pressure is enough and I don't know the spec on it I have to look it up now the other thing people do is they shoot a little fuel not gasoline but something that won't kill you uh, usually some kind of ether or something combustible down the throat of the they take off the air filter you don't have to go this deep to take the snorkel off but I'm just going to show you that you know you, you spray a little bit in here not much because the stuff's really combustive so I'll show you the what they sell here but you can blow a head gasket or damage your engine if you use too much of this stuff it's it's called it's liquid liquid fire quick starting fluid by gunk motor matic read the instructions people I can't read them without my reading glasses but don't use too much or you will suffer and cry and carry on but I don't have time to work on this anymore probably be next year before I do any more with it uh, but I wanted to at least have it running and I hope soon to take the engine the top end off find out what that noise is but I gotta get these electrical problems sorted first because I don't want to have too many problems at once to fight so uh, audience again thanks for watching uh, do-it-yourself work can be dangerous cause death or injury um, could cause fire uh, use the proper safety precautions if you're going to try attempt this work do-it-yourself work is at your own risk have a fire extinguisher handy I have several use eye protection use protection for your hands don't crawl underneath anything without jack stands and uh, blocking wheels and all of that kind of thing read the service manuals for safety precautions and when in doubt if you don't know how to do it and you don't think you can do it safely don't and there's my fire extinguisher I have lots of fire extinguishers because I've had a few fires including in this van 
so I'm still trying to recover from that but uh, anyway people thank you for watching please give me a thumbs up if you like anything that you thought I said was good information and uh, please subscribe because I need subscribers if I'm ever going to be monetized for any of this uh, I need at least 4,000 subscribers and I'm at 300 and you can unsubscribe as you please if you don't like my content but I hope that I am teaching here enough to make your t uh, make this a good use of your time thanks for watching